Hello and welcome. Today we will be taking a look at these Artwell Artist Watercolors. This is a budget brand in tubes, very large tubes, 15 mils to be exact, and even though they are a budget brand, I have heard really great things about them. So we will use them right from the tube. We will dry them out in half pans and see how they work in both ways. So stay tuned. For this experiment, of course, we have to let things dry out in half pans first. And I chose half pans because I have this empty Schmincke palette that I used in a previous video, which I will link in the corner and in the description box below for you. This will hold all 24 half pans. And I'm not sure that it will hold all 24 in this, I think seven times, I think it only holds 21. So what we will be doing is just pulling these off of this metal plate. I bent it already, but, oh, well that's interesting. Usually the bottoms of these are mixing wells like this. And so it's actually hard to put half pans here directly because they have such divots. However, this one is really flat except for the four corners. So we might be able to just put the half pans directly in here. What I usually do is pull this off the rivets and so I have a nice flat base plate to put in there and then put the half pans on top of for glue or magnets or sticky tape but we may not have to do that with this. So we'll pour all these into half pans first, let them dry out for a couple of days, see how they re-wet, see how they work right from the tube, drop them on the table, and go from there. These are actually quite impressive. Every tube has the pigment number, the pigment name, they have the pigment code, the PPK6, PV19, that whole thing, plus the light fast rating and the transparency rating. So not only are they 15 mil tubes, and when I looked at this set again today, which is July 28th, 2022, the set was $40.95 US dollars, plus there was a 20% off coupon. So I will link these down below because most sets that you get like this come in five mil tubes. So the fact that these are 15 mil tubes and they have all that information, which we will test the light fast and all of that on our own later. Um, it just seems like a pretty good deal. Oh, uh, yeah, this one has massive binder separation, but it was nothing I could like mix up right then and there. So it's just kind of a mess and I'm going to let it dry up and see what happens. I'm in the middle of pouring these into half pans here. You can see that. They're so pretty. So darn pretty. Anyway, I got two cerulean blue and it is hard. Like I can squeeze it and get a little give in this tube, but it's hard. So I can't squeeze any out into the half pan. So what I'm going to have to do for this one is cut the tube open and if I can, scoop out enough to put in a half pan and just leave the rest dried out in the tube or on the tube at that point. So I'll work on that one last. This could be interesting. Oh, that went through way easier than I thought. So that's good. I was thinking it might be a struggle. Seems dangerous. Okay, super easy. Peel this up. <laughs> it's on my lap. <laughs> it's a blue color. Good thing I have blue jeans on. Okay, did it get on my jeans? Nope. We're good, we're good, we're good. All right, so we're scooping that out and squishing it in there. At least it's squishable. Uh, now I could probably hurt myself really well. Probably stop doing this with the razor blade. Grab something less sharp. That won't take long to dry out. I did not kill myself. I have no new cuts. Life is good. So I'm kind of curious about this if I should pull the rest out or just reseal this up. I think for now I will just seal it back up. I guess. Metal on that tube is kind of sharp too. Okay, that's what we will do for now. And we have a half pan fills our little half pan experiment. I'm very happy with this. It has been a full 24 hours plus some actually. It's probably more like 26 hours and we put these into these half pans. None are dry except the one that was already dry in the tube and I can still squish it down plus this yellow. It's not dry. It's very squishy but if I touch it, it does not come off on my fingers, unlike the rest of these. So that's interesting because in contrast, I have this Daniel Smith palette here and I teach with this Daniel Smith palette in my beginner watercolor course at the college. And even in the course of the three hour course, I didn't even show them how to put 
their tubes into pans probably until the first hour had passed. So we only had two hours left of class and then I demonstrated some painting to them not very long after that and the Daniel Smith paints were already setting up and they're very hard. I would say this new gamboge maybe has a little bit of give, but within an hour, these were already starting to set up. Contrast that with these, 26 hours, and we still have softness, and if I touch any of these paints other than the yellow and the cerulean blue, I get paint all over my fingers. Food for thought. It says their binder is only gum arabic, no honey, no nothing like that. So what is taking them so long to set up? I don't know. Do you guys remember this? <laughs> it's been so long. This is my Inktober 2021 sketchbook where I did all of my cute little cat character scenes. Oh, looking through this again makes me so happy. So I thought because I was supposed to color all this in with watercolor and I was going to use the Himimiya set for the whole thing, I thought it'd be fun to try this art well set on it because I do have plenty of pages and in fact I have 19 pages at the end if I count both sides that I need to finish drawing this little character in so there'll be a video about that coming up soon I suspect. <laughs> anyway we'll try these art well watercolors in here and this is supposed to be watercolor paper it is super uber smooth <laughs> so it's probably hot press even though it's not supposed to be it's okay. These I poured May 22nd. Yeah. And it's July 28th. So they have sat a long time. It's been a long time since I've been able to get back to these. However, here they are. So lots of shrinkage, especially in a couple of these. Well, almost all of them. And this is the one we squished out from the tube. And that was over full. And look how much space is in that half pan now. Very interesting. On the other hand, this ultramarine blue stayed kind of full. So we'll paint a scene or two or so from this sketchbook with the dry paints and see what we think. And then we'll squeeze out some fresh paints and see what we think because that'll be really fun. So now we just have to pick a page that we want to paint. There's so many cute ones, I don't know. I'm also kind of nervous because I want to paint them really well. And I think this one. Day 12, stuck. It's so darn cute. <laughs> Makes me so happy looking at it. Just gonna grab a bit of a rag here to put over this side. It doesn't cover it all, but that's okay. I'm not gonna leave these paints in this Schmincke palette necessarily, but for now, we can. I tend to get out my Die Hard brushes, which is my Winsor & Newton Cotman 10. I do have the 12 I use a lot right here and my Royal and Langnickel size six. They're synthetic brushes. I do really like this one. It's an Escoda travel brush and I need to use it more. I just like get nervous using new brushes even though I've used this one several times and I really, really like it. Maybe I'll leave it nearby so I can use it. Okay, I'm not gonna pre-wet these paints or anything. I'm just gonna start painting and we'll see what happens. And just to refresh your memory, and in case you are relatively new, because I do have a lot of new subscribers that have come in recently, this art well set was something that I received from Kimberly Crick. I will link that video up in the corner and in the description box below in case you missed that. It was a very large art haul. She sent me a lot of goodies. I also bought several things from her in another video, so I'll link both the videos from her down in the description box below. Anyway, these have been recommended to me by a viewer many times so when Kimberly gave me the opportunity to buy them or I don't know if these are the ones I bought from her or she gave to me because there was a whole jumble of supplies that was amazing. Anyway, regardless, I get to try them now <laughs> and I was really surprised because I intentionally, as I mentioned, did not pre-wet these paints and they re-wet really easily. Like I didn't even have to try except for the dark brown. And I've noticed that even in my really high quality paints like Core, I do have to give the dark brown some more time to re-wet. So that was nothing unusual for me. I do have Ingram paints that I have recently acquired and I'm not sure that I have to re-wet the Ingram dark brown nearly so much as these other brands, but I still have yet to figure that out. So it's an ongoing experiment. But yeah, working in this 
sketchbook, you can kind of see the shininess. So, yep, definitely a more slick surface, which is interesting, and I'll talk to you about that a little bit more in person later. And while I was doing this time lapse, I realized at the very end, when I was done filming, had the camera put away and everything, I did not paint the rope that goes from the tree to the tire swing. So, oops, but I still had my water out, my brushes out, and the paint set out. So after this video ended, I did paint the rope and I painted it yellow ochre. There you go. I didn't leave it unpainted. I did figure that out finally. <laughs> it only took me a, a few minutes. Oops. It is really fun to get back into the sketchbook. This is actually something I was making into a coloring book for you guys for either a hard copy purchase on watercolor paper or a digital download that you could print out on your own watercolor paper. And that is actually still in progress. So I know that it's a year late, but I have been working on it. It just, it takes me longer than I thought to do this kind of project. So it's kind of interesting, but I am making it not like specific to Inktober year 2021. So this will be available at some point as a coloring book and a digital download <laughs> because I love this little character and I wanna share him with you guys. So I hope you are still interested in him <laughs> and the 19 unfinished pages because that was supposed to be a free bonus to anyone who bought the original coloring book. So that is coming up in a video, which scares me to death because drawing 19 more of this little character <laughs> is a little intimidating because I have let him go for so long with the exception of course of trying to turn my already existing pages into coloring pages which is a whole process in and of itself which I think I have filmed a little bit of and I'll share that with you guys or at least with my Patreons at some point. Speaking of which I do have a Patreon page where I send you guys postcards, give you line art and tutorials and all of that and so that is linked in the description box below but anyway this little guy needs to be finished up I need to finish this sketchbook with the remaining 19 pages and get it all painted and out to you guys so keep an eye out for that there will be something coming up in August in regards to this you'll have something to look forward to and so will I so I don't know if it's driving anyone else crazy, but the fact that I did not tape or magnetize these pans to the palette yet, it kind of drove me crazy when I was doing this because you can see the pans move all around. The good news is I could pick them up and see exactly which color I was using. I mean, you could do that if it was magnetized anyway, but not if it was taped. But I will have to do that. I'm actually going to keep these paints and I'll talk more about that at the end here. But I think I'll keep them in this palette for now after all. So I do need to permanently attach them because it is no fun trying to dig into your paints and use them when they slide all around on the palette. So that will be fixed just so you know. So who else out there has so many paints that they have no chance at all of using them up in their lifetime? Raise your hand. Yes, my hand is raised. Yep, it is. <laughs> but you know what? They make me happy. And there is something to be said about having things in your home that makes you happy. So I am all for that. All right, so I know I was supposed to now paint with these in the wet form, but you guys, that's not necessary. <laughs> these didn't even have trouble rewetting at all. So there's no need to just use them in their wet form because this was easy. I did get a warning from several people not to dry these out in half pans because they just crack, like shrink and crack and dry and all that, but if you can deal with that, <laughs> then they re-wet really easily and I don't think you'll have any trouble using them because I just had a very enjoyable painting session. The paper, however, on this sketchbook <laughs> was subpar. <laughs> Definitely felt like I was using hot press paper and maybe not even the best quality hot press paper, which is sad, but one thing that's kind of cool about using paper like that is that you can really erase things. So if you have a hard edge, it's easy to fix that. For example, like look how I have some of this green in this area right here that ended up being a really hard edge. You can just take your brush along that and scrub a dub dub <laughs> and that hard edge is just gone. So I don't know how much scrubbing you could do on this paper, 
before the paper itself starts to disintegrate, but it feels like it could handle quite a bit. So as far as quality wise, that is a bonus, but it is definitely one of those papers where, yeah, it, it's, it's a hot press. It's not supposed to be, but it is. At least I don't think it's supposed to be. I know I remember I had some troubles with the orders with this Viviva sketchbook, so maybe this did end up being a hot press, but it was supposed to be a cold press. Anyway, I'd have to go review all of my old videos because, you know, it's almost been a year since we dealt with that whole scenario. So yeah, who knows? But this page is one of my absolute favorites. It's so cute because this little guy is stuck in the tire. <laughs> And he doesn't mind because he's happy and he gets to smell flowers and somebody will come save him, he's sure. <laughs> it just makes me so happy. I also love this one. Ugh, I love most of these. <laughs> All right, guys, art whale paints. Yes, they shrunk up, they dried, but they re-wet really easily. They were easy to use. One thing I do need to still do in the future is use them on 100% cotton cold press paper, like something that I'm familiar with, like Baohong or Arches, and then I could give you even more input on them, but I'm out of time to do that today. I'll just put it on the list because, you know, why not add to the list of a million things to do? <laughs> but the cool thing is I am excited to keep these around. At first I wasn't very excited to use them, but after using them today, I'm like, uh, yeah, I would never mind using these again. So I am going to put that on the list to use in the future with 100% cotton paper that I am completely familiar with. Like I said, Arches or Baohong, Fabriano, all three of those are really great brands. More to look forward to on this channel. All right, guys, stay tuned for puppy, and I don't know if I have any bloopers in this video, but definitely got puppies. <laughs> A puppy, my cute little puppy, he's so cute. Do you guys have these paints? I know that this is one brand that I have been recommended by one of you to try for a long time, so really cool that I was able to get them from Kimberly Creek and try them out. Uh, I wanna know what you guys think of them. All right, I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Little grabby things that came with it. <laughs> what are these called? Let them dry out for a couple of days. A couple of the days. <laughs> this Daniel Smith palette in my beginner water court. <laughs> This Daniel Smith palette in my beginner watercolor court. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Why is that a hard word? It's not even a hard word. Okie dokie. <laughs> He's going to kill it. Kill it. <laughs> What are you doing? Are you being a bad dog? Are you totally a bad dog? Yeah, you're not mellow. There is no mellowness here. <laughs>